Hey there guys, what's up? This is Captain J back with another video. So this is as promised. I've made part one, part two, so this is going to be part three of Xbox 360 101 modding. So before we get to anything at all, please watch number one and number two, or part one and part two, so you can understand this video better. The reason is because I'm going to be going into a lot of detail and showing you how to do a lot of stuff, if, and if you haven't prepared, or if you don't have none of the stuff that I mentioned before, you're really not going to um, understand a lot of it. So I suggest watching part one and part two. So anyway, as promised, here's part three, and let's get to it. All right, so as mentioned on part two, this time I'm going to be showing you guys how to set up an application called Neighborhood. I'm also going to show you how to download some KVs. The other thing is that I'm also going to show you how to download some emulators and ROMs and as well we're going to be downloading some games off the internet so those are the things that we are going to be talking about today and i'm going to be showing you how to do so so anyway let's go ahead and get started with the first one so this is the application neighborhood why do we need or use neighborhood well there's a lot of different reasons as to why we do but the most basic and the best one is easy access to all of the files on the xbox 360. anytime that you want to either put anything on the xbox from your computer you don't have to use a usb it can be a lot easier and less time consuming using neighborhood so here's the way to set it up so first things first go ahead and go to the site that i provide look down in the description you'll be able to see neighborhood then go ahead and download this package right here and then once you do you're going to end up with this file right here then all you got to do is go ahead and install it and you will end up with neighborhood next we need our xbox ip go ahead and go to system settings and then to network settings choose whichever one you're using wired or wireless and then go ahead and configure network under here you'll be able to see ip address is 10.0.0.159 that is one way of getting your IP. The other one is to head over to the XEX menu. Once it's open, go ahead and press RB twice and you should see the IP all the way on the very bottom. Now what we need to do is set up the XBDM on Dash Launch. So head to Dash Launch, Installer, Default.XEX. Then on here, go down to Plugins, press A and then go to plugin number one, press A, and then find XBDM, and then go ahead and save. Now that we have all of that, let's go ahead and add the Xbox to our neighborhood. Go ahead and open it up, go to add an Xbox. And then from here, you can go ahead and put in the IP that you got from your Xbox. For example, mine was 10.0.0.159. Once I add this in, it's going to ask me if I wanted to set it as default. And I can just go ahead and say yes. And then go to next. And here it is. It's all set up and ready. I can go ahead and finish. And here's the console. It I know it says JTAG, but it's not actually a JTAG console. It's an RGH. Now go ahead and open it and then go to retail. And then here you can see all the files that I have within my Xbox. Every single one. Mod menus, stealth servers, launch high and eyes anything and all of that is in here now for example if i wanted to drop anything in let's just say i'll drop this raw video just text file i just happen to drop it in and it'll stay in here now how do i know that this is working well i'll go ahead and open my elgato capture card and then go to the xcx menu Once I get to the screen, I press RB, and then I'll go ahead and just go down searching for that text file. Anything that is in here, like I said, it's also within the Xbox neighborhood. And there it is, and I don't need it. It was just sort of a demonstration, so I'll go ahead and delete it. Now here's another neat thing that I can show you. I'm gonna go ahead and put neighborhood and Elgato capture card side by side so you can see what I can do. 
As I said, here's the neighborhood on the left. Now I'm going to go ahead and open Dash Launch. Then go to Installer and Default.xdx. As you can see, Dash Launch opened up on the right. Now what I'm going to do, it's backtrack. Go all the way to the main screen of neighborhood. And here's the JTAG. Now I'm going to go ahead and right click on the mouse and then go to Reboot Cold. And then just give it a couple of seconds and it'll reboot. These are just some of the great things that you can do with Neighborhood. Now let's go ahead and move on. Once your console gets banned, and trust me, this will happen several times, you're gonna need some KVs. So let's go ahead and download some. I provided a couple of websites where you can go ahead and download or get some KVs. Now of course you're gonna have to pay for them. This is just normal and it's part of the process. So I went ahead and purchased some KV some time ago. Then I'll go ahead and show you what it looks like. Here's the email that I received from where the KVs are at. But this is an old one, so there's nothing in here. So I'm going to go ahead and show you a new one. Here is a 3KV purchase. And I'll go ahead and click on here. And then you can see where you can go ahead and download the 3KVs. From here, I'll open up my KV folder. And then you can see on here that uh, although I did have five, now I only have one left. Well, that's because I've been gotten banned a couple of times. So anyway. After you have purchased and received your KVs, we're going to go ahead and put them in the Xbox. So we can do this two ways, either with the USB or with Neighborhood. Since we've got Neighborhood working already and we want to go ahead and test it out, let's go ahead and use Neighborhood. Here's both the files that I'll be using, of course Neighborhood and the file with my KV. Here's the KV, of course the CPU key. Go ahead and close this out. Um, of course with the Xbox turn on, go ahead and open up Neighborhood. And you can see here is my JTAG, also known as RGH console. So here we go. Now you can see that it is on. This is my uh, Egalto capture card. Go ahead and open it. Then I go to retail. And let me just move this, <laughs> move it all out of the way just for a bit. There we go. And then I'll go ahead and open the file that contains the KV and the CPU key. So you can go ahead and copy both of these files and then just transfer them over to the Xbox. Of course it's gonna ask me if I want to replace them. I'll just click on yes to all. And there we go. Now that it's all set and done I can go ahead and close uh, this out right here. And I don't need that anymore so I'll throw that away. And I'm gonna go ahead and back up to the JTAG and then I'll go ahead and reboot. The reason why I, wanted, why I want to do this is so my still server goes ahead and gets the new KV then of course it's going to reboot once again but that's completely normal. So now let's get over to the emulators. So while doing some research on this I kind of came to a conclusion that a lot of the websites that usually provide the emulators for the Xbox 360 are no longer providing them. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to borrow somebody else's link for the uh, Super Nintendo Entertainment System uh, ROM or emulator and ROM. So I do apologize, but I'm going to have to do that that way anyway. So we're going to go ahead and just download, uh, like I said, the emulator and the ROMs for the uh, Super Nintendo. One last thing before I start, before I forget, this emulator is going to be launched through the XEX menu. It doesn't need a lot of power or a lot of resources, so it's very easy to use. There is some emulators that have to be launched through Zell. I believe one of them is uh, specifically for it to work a lot better, faster, better graphics and all of that is the N64. I believe you can do it with a PS1 as well, though I haven't really done a lot of research because I'm not a PS1 uh, sort of a uh, fanatic. So I like the N64, I have a video for the N64 and hopefully I'll be making some more in the future if you guys would like some. So, as I said, this is mainly a demonstration to show you that this can be done and it is easy and it is uh, simple. So, you can always look on YouTube and research or search for somebody else that shows how to use uh, these types of emulators, whether it's uh, MAME, PS1, N64, etc. Any of that. So this is, like I said, specifically a demonstration 
for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. A demonstration. Keep that in mind, please. All right, so let's go ahead and download this thing. Of course, the link will be down in the description for you to download this file. Once you download it, it is going to be a RAR file. So you're either going to need 7-zip or WinRAR, whichever one you want. And then I go to the download folder. Here it is. I'll put it over on my desktop. Then what I'm going to do is go ahead and extract it using 7-zip. Once it's all extracted, you're going to end up with this folder here. And in it, it contains everything that you're going to need, the SNES 360, and of course the ROM files themselves. Here are the games. What I'm going to do is just going to go ahead and just delete them from here. And then I'll go into the ROM file itself within the SNES 360 and then just paste them on here. Now I'm good to go. Now you can either transfer these through USB or use a neighborhood, whichever one you'd like. So what I'm going to do is because we've been using neighborhood, I'll go ahead and launch neighborhood itself so that way I can transfer it through there. So here is the SNES 360 itself. So I'll open neighborhood and then go into the JTAG and then from there to retail. Now I have some emulators here already such as the actual SNES emulator itself and I do have a couple of ROMs already in here but this is because these were the ones that were already in here I didn't add none of these they were already in here there's hundreds of them in here so for the purpose of the video I'm gonna go ahead and copy it into the emulator folder itself there was one here before but it's empty as you can see so what I do is just go ahead and delete it once deleted I'll go ahead and just move this a little bit out of the way and here's the SNES 360 then I'll just go ahead and drag and drop onto this folder itself. It is the emulator folder and as you can see there was one game that didn't exactly want to copy but you know I was okay because this is just a demonstration so I'm only going to have three and not all of them. So anyway let's go ahead and jump onto the actual Xbox 360 itself. While on the XEX menu I will go down to emulators this is where I copied uh, the folder here's the SNES 360 and I'll go down to the SNES 360 dot XEX and then go ahead and launch it and here we go now I did ask me to sign in so I just went ahead and signed in anyway just part of the demonstration so once you sign in I can go ahead and click on games and here we got the three games that got actually copied over I'll go ahead and launch Super Mario World okay and here we go here is the emulator it's exactly the same as the SNES of course just a little bit more powerful the buttons are already configured and you know just you just kind of like work with it just a little bit to figure it out completely and uh, you'll be you'll be engaged in it very soon and you'll learn how to use it pretty quickly it's not that hard it's very simple this is the best easiest way to launch an emulator as i said remember uh, it's mainly because this is a low powered system it doesn't need a lot of power and like i mentioned before there's some of them that need to be launched through zell so let's go ahead and jump into another game or out I'll leave somewhat of a demonstration of different games that I played on here so that way you can just kind of take a look of the different games that are in here. Now unfortunately I cannot leave you all of this giant list for you to download um, because one my video will be taken down because of copyright though I'm already taking a risk of it and then two the sharing websites that I use um, I don't have any storage anymore and then third there are hundreds of video games in here you're not going to have time to play every single one of them so what i suggest is downloading every single one of them specifically that you want to play and you can find all of them in the website that i'll provide so you don't you can just like pick and choose whichever ones you want and then download them and then put them on, on the wrong folder and then just launch the game so that way you don't have hundreds of games to go through and then you're like okay well what the hell is this i don't need this you, then you just end up deleting a whole bunch of them so pick and choose which ones you want from the website download them do the exact same thing i did and you'll have all the games that you want specifically and now to the last topic downloading games you can do this several ways the way that i suggest is going to the website that i provide 
Now, people tend to download games through torrents. Those can be dangerous because they could include viruses within them. So I don't suggest using any torrents. So I suggest using the website that I provide. Now, once you're on there, find a game that you want to play or that you don't have, you know, etc. Keep in mind, keep an eye on your storage so that way you know how much storage you have left. And then that way you'll know somewhat of an idea of the games that you can get. Now, if you have a pretty decent sized storage, okay, so you're good. So let's go ahead and download any game in here. I'll just kind of look through here and see which one I like. To make this a little bit easier, I've already downloaded GTA 5, so I'm just going to show you what to do and how to do it. Uh, so I've searched for GTA 5, actually I searched for Grand Theft Auto, and then here's the results. Now there's two of them, region free, and the one with this one and two plus a DLCs. So I went ahead and picked the first one. Then I'll go ahead and scroll down, and you're going to see the download links for both of them. There's either mirrors on Mega or just on different websites. Now, keep an eye on this. I usually use Mega, and there's disk one and disk two. When you download them and extract them, you're going to need this password. So keep an eye on it and make sure you copy this password. Let's go ahead and go to disk one. And after it's loaded, here's all the files that you're gonna have to download. You're gonna have to download every single one, trust me. Every single one has to be downloaded because you're going to need all of it. Then I'll go to DVD2. Here's all the files for DVD2. Keep note, it is DVD2. So once it's downloaded, you'll have the whole file for both of them. So here's how to do it. So here's all the files. I've extracted them several different ways. You just got to be careful of how you do it. Uh, here's DVD 1 and of course DVD 2 or disc 1 and disc 2 So here's both of them now. Here's all the files that were downloaded and this is after I extracted them and What you can see on here is on the very end of every single one It says like R00 or 001 and then you're gonna have to look through every single one that says on the end R 0 whatever or R99 all the way at the very bottom and then you're going to extract them both into a single file like so. Once I select every single one, I'll right click on the mouse and then I'll go to extract and then I'll extract there. Once uh, they start extracting, they may ask you for the password and if you need it, use it. If not, you know, whatever. So I'll go ahead and skip it because I already have every single thing. And then once you extract that, you're going to end up with a folder here. Now this one includes some files for DVD1 and then DVD2 once they're extracted. Then you're going to have to extract the rest of them which is S like 00 or S something. Uh, and then extract them both and then of course put them together and you'll uh, end up with DVD1, DVD2, Disc1 and then Disc2. Now I also have the DLCs which I have already downloaded previous. Now. Um, before I go on, this is specific to GTA 5 and the reason is because there's two discs. So there might be different games that have disc 1 and then disc 2. Um, of course, I do have the ISOs because I used the torrent, which I do not recommend doing because this it was very painful to try to do this. But anyway, um, like I said, it's very specific to GTA 5 because of the two discs. And then you're going to have to combine the files to... Uh, of course, it's on DVD 1 or disc 2 or disc 1 or all that. So, that is basically like all the information that I can give you for downloading because it, it's all specific to every single game. If you've done this and if you've transferred all the files into GTA 5 in the Xbox 360 and if you have a problem that it's either not installing or it's not running, I do have a video of you know the way that you can fix how to make GTA 5 work just in case you have that issue that I have or that I had and now GTA 5 works. So is there anything that I missed? Is there anything that you didn't understand? Um, anything else that you would want to know or that you don't know maybe you're stuck on? Uh, I didn't go into enough detail. What are your thoughts? How do you see this video? Was it informative enough? Um, you know, 
I would like your feedback, whether it's good, whether it's bad, whether you're judgmental, whether it's just props, whether it's a like, whatever. Um, I always like to hear from you guys uh, if you liked the video, of course, and if you found it informative. If any of my videos at all have helped you, I like to hear all of that. Or even if I have messed up and, you know, uh, done something wrong, misspelled something, uh, gave way too much detailed information on something and just kind of either bored or you know went off the path that I was you know going anything like that there's been quite a few people that, that have told me you know some flaws that I've had and then I went ahead and corrected those videos and so that way you guys have the best information as informative as possible so anyway let me hear your thoughts let me know what you guys think whether it's like i said judgmental and if it's something that i need to fix i always like to hear that i always like to see it because this way i know you guys are being engaged within my videos and you guys are watching them and paying attention to the videos so anyway thank you guys so very much for watching i believe this may be the last video on the series it is part three so if there is another i will um go ahead and you know make it later on uh as i said give me some ideas of something you would like to see on the, either on the next video on the next tutorial or something else you would like me to teach you like i said so anyway thank you guys so very much for watching this was captain j and i'll see you on the next one peace I, I